So I'm coming after a legendary talk from Prabhat. Actually, this title has to be Prabhat's demo is the new black, <laughs> right? Uh, actually, Prabhat covered most of my talk as well. Uh, uh, let's, let's see what are the APIs available for you to build applications. Uh, most of the API which uh, Prabhat covered in his demo, I'm going to talk a bit more details, right? So let's talk about the IAM ev evolution and why do we need a set of APIs for you to build applications, right? If you look from a conventional like 10 years, 20 years back, we had several systems which are like isolated and siloed, right? Each of the application had their own users which are not shared with different applications. The users are created again and again in different applications, and they are managed separately. So if you take an example of this particular user called John, his username might be different on different systems. He might have different username passwords in different systems. And possibly, as like Sagra noted, he might have uh, reused his password in all the system, and that's how he managed uh, the user accounts within the system, but that, that is not manageable. When a user joins the company, uh, like you had to create accounts in each of these systems. When the person leaves the company, you had to remove from them. When a person wants to log into multiple systems, they had to log in again and again and again, and so on. So this is very unmanageable situation, right? Then came the uh, centralized identity, but still it is not an open standard, it, uh, it's a proprietary standard. So the advantage is now you are managing the identity at a central place so that you can provision, deprovision, person can log in uh, with same same credential and can log into multiple systems uh, at the same time, which is the single sign-on variation. However, if you bring some other system into the picture, still you had to do lots of work. Possibly it might not be possible, or it is a bit harder. Because of the proprietary nature of the APIs used to authenticate with the identity system, right? So when we, uh, like for example, if you look at most of the organizations now, the mergers, demergers, bringing new ap acquisitions, uh, bringing new applications, et cetera, et cetera, it's very normal. And in a system like this, all the operations will become very complex, right? Uh, so the challenges are some physical users digitally represented in different silos. Because of that, all the operations, user management, uh, the provision, etc., will become an issue. Single sign-on is an issue. The identity mismanagement is, uh, is high probable. People will not be able to manage the identity properly. And then identity in integration between various systems is very difficult or even impossible. So those are main problems. Then came the standards. So these are the standards which uh, Prabhat talked about. But the reason the standards were invented is to help you to enable these identity integrations uh, seamlessly or very easily, right? So if you look at uh, in this particular case, like there are several standards we are using, like SAML SSO is used to do single sign-on based on uh, SAML tokens, etc. OpenID Connect, again, an authentication system. WS Federations, you can log in. Uh, Scheme is used for provision, deprovisioning, OAuth for authorizations, and so on. So there are zillions of standards, APIs, available for you to write applications and then can integrate the applications together. So in this particular case, let's take you are bringing a new applications, right? Still, you can use the same identity provider because the standards are open, the APIs are open, so that you can bring a new applications and can do the integrations very easy. But still, the user might not be happy because still, Still, the, the systems are provisioned um, with, the, with the centralized identity. When a user comes, you have to create an account, and et cetera, right? So uh, again, Sagra talked about bring your own identity. Uh, so a customer 
wants the customer to be the control person, right? If I am trying to uh, log into a system, if I am trying to access a system, I want my credential, or I want the choice of my credential to be used there, right? Again, I have a Facebook account, I have a Twitter account, I have a Gmail account. Why should I create another account in some other system? Why can't I use whatever the credentials I am using? So you bring your own identity using social logins or uh, any other uh, identity uh, into the picture. This, this also provides a seamless experience multi across multiple channels. For example, I can use the applications using my uh, laptop, and then by using my mobile phones or iPad or any system, like omnichannel systems, right? Still, I am expecting the same experience, expecting the convenience of using any devices to access the applications. So the applications uh, builders have to use all these APIs to build the application so that you can provide a seamless experience uh, in integrations, right? Again, uh, with the introduction of GDPR versus uh, open banking and so on, the consent management, the ownership of user information, so privacy concerns, et cetera, is becoming uh, harder and harder, or becoming very important when you are building the applications, right? So then for each of these operations, you need APIs so that your applications can manage user information, applications can manage the consents of the user so that uh, user can control his data to the level of uh, uh, limits they want. Again, the party-to-party -party delegation. For example, if I'm accessing, uh, if I have uh, uh, access to some resources, I want to give some access to Prabhat for a short amount of period, again, how can I do that? So again, when you have multiple devices or multiple uh, IoT systems, you have some devices wants to give control to some other devices on a temporary basis or some on a limited time basis. How can you do that? So this is, uh, again, um, uh, customer EM in a glance. Basically, still you are using the standard APIs or standards available, but still as part of the logging process, uh, you are using all the uh, social logins and so on. So each of these are real requirements in the case of enterprise applications, which, ri which gave rise to the, the identity APIs or the standards so that applications can be written on a, uh, on a standard way so that each of these applications and each of these identities can be integrated with each other. So again, th the reasons uh, all of these are there is obviously you want some customer, the, the business to be successful. The application which you are building has to be seamless and successful, etc. In order to have that level of successful, the customer has to be satisfied. And how do you provide the customer satisfaction? Is through the seamless experience by using the identity integrations, right? If you are using one application today, another application tomorrow, or if you are using one device today, another device tomorrow, multiple orthogonal varieties of uh, interactions or uh, in integrations between various systems is achieved through identity integrations, and then the identity APIs plays a major role in achieving those uh, identity systems. So what's next? The other uh, issue is because of the identity, sorry, because of the uh, IoT devices, Internet of Things, the number of devices are increasing, right? Then each of these devices have their own identities. How do you manage them, right? This is uh, the, the number of devices are increasing. It's going to million, to billion, to zillion, etc. So then the devices are coming and going. There are no fixed uh, durations for a device to live, right? That means when a device comes, it has to go and register dynamically. When a device wants to talk to some other devices, it has to automatically authenticate to other devices, right? So if you want to give some control to other devices to, uh, on a temporary or permanent basis, you need delegations. So all of these problems causes the invention of identity APIs. 
So what are the identity APIs we have? The first one I want to cover is Skim, uh, uh, System for Cross-Domain uh, Identity Management. So basically, Skim allows you to um, allows you to manage users, like provision, deprovisions, manage users, groups, etc., in various systems, right? So there are multiple ways. Like, for example, if you get a new user in one of the system, and when you create a user in one, like, for example, if an employee is joining in your organization, you are creating the user in the HR system, how do you automatically provision the user in Salesforce or so Marketo or some other systems out there, or Gmail, et cetera, right? So you only create the user only once, and that particular user creation is propagated to various other systems. One option you could do is all the system shares a single LDAP, but that might not be possible always, right? That means you need to integrate all these systems through some sort of APIs, and Skim plays that particular part. So if you create a user there, or if a user is coming and self-register himself on a portal, that will trigger uh, Skim API calls into the identity server, which will create an identity in the system, as well as then it can, uh, it can trigger, uh, 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 trigger other systems to create uh, users on behalf of the user. Right? So this Skim API helps you to provision, deprovision uh, the systems or users into various systems. Again, if the user is resigning today, uh, right? If an employee is resigning, you had to deprovision. You had to remove the user accounts from all the systems. So you remove it from only one place, and then using the scheme, it will get propagated, propagated to all other systems, and the user will be deprovisioned from entire systems. Right? Uh, Auth2 is the other uh, API available to do the authorizations. Uh, Prabhat covered it in a, a very detailed manner. So basically, again, uh, Auth has uh, their own REST APIs, uh, as well as uh, there are several grant types available. Uh, basically, this grant types, um, grant types helps you to achieve various uh, use cases uh, based on how, what level of uh, easiness you want in order to build the applications, right? Some of the, like for example, authorization grant code is suitable for web applications. If you get a SAML, basically if you use a single sign-on system, you are having a SAML token. If you use the SAML token, then by using the SAML token, you can take an access token uh, by using SAML bearer talk grant. JWT grant, uh, again, if you have a JWT token, uh, you can get the other grants and so on. So again, Auto, I'm not going to go into the details. Uh, Prabhat covered it in uh, a very detailed manner. Uh, this is just a flow of how the authorization grant, uh, code grant flow works. Like, for example, the resource owner, who is the user, is trying to access the applications, which will redirect you to the identity server where the user can Pro, uh, log in and provide the consent whether he is allowing this particular application to access the resource on behalf of the user. Uh, so basically, this, uh, this particular identity authorization server will provide an authorization code to the application. By using that particular code, uh, the application can get a token, uh, request a token, get an access token, and then pass it to the resource server to get the resource, right? Again, all these interactions are happening through an API, right? So regardless of what programming language you are using, what technology you are using, you will be able to implement this particular pattern by using the APIs available. OpenID Connect is uh, so basically the OAuth is for authorizations. It doesn't provide any authentication system. The OpenID Connect was invented to solve the authentication problem, which is built on top of uh, OAuth 2. Uh, so basically, it is uh, providing some additional scopes, additional tokens, et cetera, in order to provide the authentication details. 
So this flow is similar to the previous flow, but in addition to the token request and you are getting an access token, you're also getting an ID token as well, right? So from the ID token, you can understand or you can identify who the user is, what claims the user is having, et cetera, et cetera, and then uh, can make some local decisions within the applications to make uh, uh, what kind of uh, permissions or what kind of activities this particular user can do in the applications. So in addition to that, uh, there are some endpoints available to request additional user information, uh, introspection uh, APIs, where you can pass the access token and get additional user information into uh, the applications, right? So if you want additional uh, details about the user in addition to what you have already in the ID token, uh, you can access it through the APIs. Um, the other API I wanted to cover is called UMA. Um, uh, so basically, this particular API, uh, uh, this particular API provides uh, again uh, built on top of uh, 2.0. So basically, this particular uh, uh, API allows you to give you a consent or you give you a authorization to somebody else on behalf of you, right? Um, so basically, let's say if you try to, um, uh, uh, if I have a particular resource, let's say I have some photos, and I want the photo to be viewed by Prabhat, right? So I want to let Prabhat to see the photos for a particular short amount of period. Let's say until, uh, uh, until tomorrow he can access and see the photo, so temporarily giving the permission. Or you can say, I want to give the permission to somebody else having a particular um, role. I, I want to give it to the, uh, the users who are having the role called printer, so that they can take the photos, print it, and give it to me, right? So again, this particular specification allows you to uh, expose some of the additional APIs, like protection API, introspection API, and authorization API, where the application can register their resources. So in this particular case, the auth resource server can go and register the resources uh, with the server, with the identity server, which allows the owner, which is me, I am going to give access to somebody else, where I can go and define policies against that particular resources. This particular resource can be accessed by these, these people or can be accessed during this particular period of time. So basically, you are defining a policy against the resources so that other people can come and access it. Right? Uh, again, uh, this particular um, specification defines several tokens. Uh, one is called the protection API token, which allows the resource server, which allows the resources to be, get registered with the server. At the same time, uh, another token type called requesting party token. So anybody else coming and trying to access my resource have to come up with, uh, have to get this requesting party token from the identity server, and then can issue uh, those uh, by passing the request party token, they can access the resources available, right? So uh, this allows you to partially give permission to somebody else, or temporarily give the permission to somebody else to access on behalf of you. Uh, the next API uh, which is available is called uh, Zachmel. Again, Prabhat covered Zachmel. It's an XML-based policy. Uh, called Extensible Access Control Markup Language. Basically, this allows you to define the access policy on a very fine-grained manner. Let's say if you can say the system or the service or the resource can be accessed by um, the administrator, or it can be accessed by um, uh, developers within 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. Right? So basically, very fine-grained manner, you can define the policies so that uh, you can define the access control for the resources. 
right? Uh, so the way, again, this is exposing multiple APIs for people to program against the API. Uh, so the application can come and request uh, from the policy decision point by passing the ZACML request. Again, Prabhat's demo covered this. Basically, when Prabhat's uh, demo accessed the ZACML engine, basically it is accessing the policy decision point. And uh, the policy decision points get additional information from various places, collect the user information. Then the policy can use all that user information uh, by collecting additional information, make a decision, pass the response back to the application so that the application can decide whether to allow the user or not. Right? So this is, again, uh, one set of API. The uh, OPA, Open Policy Agent, is, again, the similar kind of functionality, but it's a bit more expressive than the ZACML, um, for, uh, ZACML specifications. Uh, this is uh, something uh, people are working on these days. Again, uh, Prabhat covered in uh, his demo. We, our identity server, we haven't uh, added this support yet, but all other APIs supports are already available. So user consent is uh, becoming um, important with the GDPR and open banking specifications, etc. Uh, so again, identity server exposes a consent management API so that when a user comes and try to access the application, can go and define the consents, uh, which will be eventually uh, stored as part of the user's attributes. Uh, so whether uh, what are the informations the user allowed the identity provider to collect other consent uh, related information, et cetera. And then uh, also it exposes through a PIA, personal information identifier exposure API as well, so that uh, the user can manage all his information. So as part of the GDPR, if a user wants to delete all his information, he should be able to do it. Or if he wants to download all the information, he should be able to do so he can control uh, what kind of information, what kind of uh, details the application should keep, etc. Uh, the user should be able to manage all of that details. So this API provides you to uh, have all that management capabilities uh, so that your application can manage user permissions, user concerns, etc. by using it. So again, uh, just, just to reiterate, all of these APIs are network accessible so that it is not specific to a programming language or not specific to a particular technology. Each of these are available as a network accessible endpoints. And based on the use case and based on the requirement of the applications, it can integrate with various of these APIs and then achieve the applications, uh, uh, the experience of the application. Uh, so that's, uh, that's it. Uh, basically, uh, and any questions. But I guess uh, it's good Prabhat covered most of these APIs through his demo. So any questions? Yeah.